It's a tale as old as time, the legend of the ghostly hitchhiker. The story has been passed down through generations. It typically involves a solitary traveler encountering a mysterious female hitchhiker on a dark, desolate road. This traveler offers the woman a lift, only for her to vanish without a trace at some point during the ride. Many versions of this scary story include the driver ultimately reaching the woman's requested destination to find she has been dead for years. This hitchhiker, a ghost, the spirit of someone who died tragically along that stretch of road, doomed to repeat their journey in search of closure or revenge. I always thought, wow, this is a great ghost story. Until recently I learned, this legend is based on a real life haunting. One of the most haunted cemeteries in the United States is Chicago's Resurrection Cemetery, and it's home to one especially active ghost. Her name, Resurrection Mary, also known as the Ghost of Archer Avenue. She's had countless encounters with dozens of witnesses throughout the years. This haunting is regarded as one of the most compelling cases because of how many people have encountered Mary's ghost firsthand. Something about being out on the road in the dark, you never know who or what you'll pass along the way. This is Avery After Dark, and I'm your host, Avery Ross. Welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you tuned in for this very ghostly episode. Today, I have three true mysterious ghost tales from the road. It's officially spring, it's getting warmer outside, and people are starting to travel, go on trips. So it's only right we make it spooky. Now, let's get into today's first story. In Justice, Illinois, sits Resurrection Cemetery on Archer Avenue, just a few miles southwest of Chicago. The final resting place for more than 150,000 souls. The cemetery spans almost 400 acres, and it's home to one ghost in particular, considered to be Chicago's most famous spirit, Resurrection Mary. Since the 1930s, numerous men and women driving northeast along Archer Avenue, between the Willow Brook Ballroom and Resurrection Cemetery, have reported seeing and picking up a young female hitchhiker. She's always described as wearing a long white gown, a party dress, she has blonde hair and blue eyes. She's most frequently seen walking very slowly along the side of the road, and those who have spoken with her say she's very quiet. When picked up, she will request to be taken to the cemetery, where she will disappear into it. According to the Chicago Tribune, a paranormal investigator named Richard Crow has collected three dozen substantiated reports of Mary from the 1930s to today. Richard said all these witnesses were very level-headed, normal folks, and they all share similar encounters with ghostly Mary. It all really began in 1939 with a man named Jerry Payless. Jerry, in his 20s at the time, lived in the south side of Chicago, and one night he went with some friends to the Liberty Grove Dance Hall at 47th and Mozart. In this time period, dance halls were the place where young folks would go, socialize, have fun, and dance. There, he spotted a woman across the room that caught his attention instantly. Jerry described this woman as pretty, about 5'7", wearing a long white dressy gown, shoulder-length blonde hair. Jerry could not take his eyes off of this woman. He asked some friends, hey, do you all know who that girl is? His friends saw her and said they didn't know, so he decided to go ask her to dance. Jerry said this woman agreed, and the two began to dance the night away. She told him her name was Mary. Jerry said he found her captivating, but noted she was quiet and also very cold to the touch. He even mentioned to her her hands were cold as ice. The only information Jerry got out of Mary was that she lived in the South Side just like him, in a house on South Damon. Jerry was familiar with that area and really recognized the house that she was referring to. As the night came to a close, Jerry offered to give Mary a ride back home, assuming she would want to be dropped off at her house, and Mary did accept a ride. But strangely, she didn't ask him to take her home, instead, she requested to be driven down Archer Road. He didn't really know why she would want to travel down that way so late at night, he asked her, why do you want to go that way? 
you just told me where you live, that's in the other direction. And he said that Mary was adamant, requesting that they take a drive down Archer Road. So he agreed. They got in the car, started driving, and Jerry continued to question why she wanted to come in this direction, commenting on how dark it was out that way. He said that Mary remained quiet. Then, as they approached Resurrection Cemetery, Mary requested that Jerry stop the car. He does exactly what she asks and pulls over in front of the front gates, but continues to question, what are we doing here? He said Mary told him to wait at the car, and then she began walking towards the cemetery gates. And then, according to Jerry, Mary vanished before his very eyes. She was there one second and gone the next. He was stunned and didn't know what to make of this. So the next day, he got in his car and drove over to Damon Avenue, specifically to the home where Mary said that she lived. There, he walked up to the front door of a small brick house, and before he could knock, a woman opened the door. He began asking about Mary, informing this woman that she had told him that she lived at this house. The woman at the door looked distressed and basically said, you must be mistaken. He said, no, I'm not. I danced with a Mary all last night. We met at the dance hall and really hit it off. The woman quickly interrupted him and said, that's impossible for him to have met Mary, as she was her daughter, but she had been dead for years. Jerry was in shock, but with Mary disappearing into the cemetery, along with her hands being so cold to the touch, it all began to click for Jerry. He had met a ghost and danced with her all night long. He had given a ride to a spirit. Jerry was interviewed later in his life about this incident, saying that he later worked in a funeral home and found that the corpses he came into contact with there had the exact same feeling as holding Mary's hand. Jerry left the home that day without getting any more information on Mary or the family, and throughout the years was perplexed by the entire experience. Jerry has since passed away, but said this absolutely happened, and he never forgot it. And this kicked off a series of Mary sightings and encounters. Over the years, many researchers have attempted to identify Mary, and many believe this ghost was a woman named Mary Bergovi. Mary was killed in a traffic accident one Saturday night in 1934, a month before her 21st birthday. Many locals theorized that Mary had spent her final hours at the dance hall, and the encounters continued throughout the years. In January 1979, it was a cold Chicago evening, and a cab driver was making his way down Archer and became lost. It was getting late, and he looked up to see a young woman walking alone alongside the road. He pulled up next to her and asked her for directions. He said she remained quiet, he asked again, even offering to give her a ride for free in exchange for her help. He described the woman as blonde, blue-eyed, wearing a long white gown. And she finally agreed, hopping into the back of his cab. The two continued down the road. Over a mile ahead was Resurrection Cemetery. The two weren't in the car for long. When the woman in white told the cab driver to stop in front of the cemetery, he did so and when he turned around to ask her why she wanted to stop here, he said she had disappeared from the car without even a door slam. He had just encountered Resurrection Mary, and many other male cab drivers have reported similar experiences over the years. Most times, Mary's ghost is seen wandering down the road that Resurrection Cemetery sits on, like she's on a loop, but it gets spookier. In 1973, Mary was reportedly seen at another nightclub, a place called Harlow's on Cicero Avenue in Chicago's southwest side. That same year, a cab driver came into Chet's Melody Lounge, a spot across from Resurrection Cemetery. He was asking around about a young lady in a white gown with blonde hair who had vanished without paying her cab fare. Many believe this was Resurrection Mary, looking for someone to take her home after a night on the town. Another woman local to Chicago named Claire Rudnicki had heard mentions of Resurrection Mary for years, ghost stories, but didn't really give it much thought as she had never seen a ghost and didn't really believe in them. Until late one night in 1980, 
She, along with her husband Mark and another friend, were driving out along Archer Road. It was dark when suddenly they spotted a lone woman walking alongside the road on the right side. Claire said this woman was glowing white, bright, illuminating. She said she was walking very slow and Claire immediately said her stomach dropped. Realizing that this was Resurrection Mary, and she immediately got scared. Mark insisted that they turn back around and try to talk to her, but Claire said no, she was so frightened. The group said that as they passed her, they tried to get a look at her face, but said it seemed like there was just a black void. Mark was thoroughly convinced that they had seen a ghost, as he too had witnessed her, how bright she was, and said there was no way anyone could have pulled a prank like that. This was very real, and by the time the car eventually turned around, the group saw that she had vanished. Another woman had a terrifying encounter with Resurrection Mary in October 1989. A woman named Janet Kalal was out driving around Chicago with a friend one evening. She and her friend Pamela had been out for about an hour when they found themselves passing by the gates of Resurrection Cemetery. When all of a sudden, a woman in all white, gown and blonde hair blowing back behind her, quickly darted from the gates of the cemetery into the road. Janet and Pamela screamed, feeling they were about to slam into this woman. But as Janet laid on the brakes, bracing for impact, they were shocked. There was no impact. They didn't hit anyone or anything. They both got out of the car, looked around, but didn't see a soul. Janet said, quote, This young woman ran out in front of my car, and I hit her. End quote. She was certain of it. Janet's friend Pamela witnessed the exact same thing. She, too, saw the woman jump in front of the car. And this was not the only case of Resurrection Mary seemingly jumping in front of people's cars. Outside the cemetery, there were other confirmed sightings in 1976, 78, 80, and 89, and they're all similar in nature. Although her haunting stories have stood the test of time, there is so much about Mary that remains a mystery. According to these witnesses, she never reveals much. The only request she has is to be taken back to the cemetery. Like I said, it's like she's on a loop on that road. Per reports, it's said that reports of sightings have dropped off since their peak in the 1970s and 1980s, which is also very mysterious. Where did Mary go? Is she still roaming the cemetery? And if so, why has she stopped engaging with the living world? This is by far one of the most compelling and interesting hauntings because of how interactive Mary's spirit was. Hopefully, Mary went into the light and found peace. For our second story, I want to share a real encounter a man had on a trip in 2014. This man wanted to remain anonymous, but for the story, we will call him Ben. Ben, a military man, was making an exciting trip about 10 years back. He was on the way to get married. He and his best man took off for an 800-mile road trip from Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, where they were based, to Lafayette, Indiana, where the wedding was set to take place. Ben was really excited, and the two were ready to get there and let the celebration begin. It was a cold January day. They had been driving all day and all night. He said around 1 a.m., the weather started to get really bad. Temperatures dropping, and as the pair were getting close to Indianapolis, they found they had no money to pay for gas to refuel their car, and they were about to run out. Ben said he grew up in the trucking industry with his father, so they decided to stop at a truck stop. There was a bit of a code between truckers, and he figured someone would spot them a few dollars so they could get home. Because the main interstates were shut down due to the weather, the two had to get off the highway and search for a truck stop along the back roads instead. It was dark back there, and they couldn't see anything. He said through the back roads, they eventually drove up to a smaller truck stop. Initially, they were relieved as they were almost out of gas, but noticed it only had one truck outside and they got sort of a strange feeling about the place. They recalled the stop was just a blacked out truck with a blacked out trailer. There was no sign, no real markings on it, nothing distinguishable. 
but they were in a pretty tough spot with no money and no way to get home. They were going to run out of gas. The two parked in the parking lot and walked inside, assuming they would just find a rundown place, but just hope to find someone that could spot them a few dollars to make it home. At which time Ben said they would go to the bank, take out cash and pay the person back. To their surprise, when they walked inside the tiny little shop, they found a tidy, bright and clean diner. There they saw a waitress, a cook, and a lone truck driver, just the three of them. Ben and his friend went and struck up a conversation with the other truck driver. He said the man was really friendly and he bought the two cups of coffee. The men sat there for a bit, talking for about 30 minutes. They spoke about where they were headed, the wedding, and Ben said they had run out of money for gas. Kindly, this truck driver gave Ben 20 bucks. This was such a relief, and they said thank you so much. So Ben went outside, pumped their gas, then quickly came back into the diner and told the truck driver, hey, I really appreciate it. I'll be back with $20. I just need to hit an ATM, and Ben said he would be back in the morning to drop off the cash. The truck driver said no problem and waved goodbye. Ben wanted to make good on his word, so the two hopped back on the road until they finally hit Indianapolis later that night. That next morning, Ben and his friend went to the bank, he got $20 cash, and then the two turned right back around and made the 40 or so minute drive back to that lone truck stop. Ben said they got there around 10 a.m., and here's where things get really spooky. He said they were stunned to see the truck stop was completely boarded up. He said it looked like it had been abandoned for years and the truck that was out front the night before was gone. The building was a completely different one from the night before. There was no one there. They looked into the windows of the diner and it was abandoned. So Ben and his friend were in complete shock and on their way out of town, they passed a cop and decided to pull over and talk to him. The two walk up to the police officer and explain what happened the night before. The cop listens to their story and begins laughing and says, oh, you met the ghost of three. Apparently, this trio, the waitress, the cook, and the truck driver, were well-known ghosts in this small town. And the men were shocked to learn they spent 30 minutes at a ghost truck stop. But the cop wasn't surprised at all. As he said, many people had encountered the truck stop when they needed help. And to make things even creepier, the officer said that that particular truck stop had been boarded up for the last 25 years. The two men could never find any other logical explanation for what happened that night, other than they came upon a ghost truck stop. The ghost of three... This trio helped these two military men get home for a wedding. And everything about this truck stop remains a mystery. No one knows who these three spirits are or why they appear to certain individuals. And I know that the police officers said they were the ghost of three, but I like to think that maybe they're angels popping up to help the living world when we need it. Because Ben and his friend felt comfortable there. I mean, they spent 30 minutes speaking with the truck driver. It wasn't scary in any way. This man just talked and listened to the men before extending a helping hand. That is amazing, isn't it? And our final story is a short but chilling one. Jeff lived in Dayton, Ohio, and was out driving with his three-year-old son, Miles, in the back seat. The two had been out running some errands when they passed by a cemetery. Jeff described the cemetery as modest with small plaques, saying it basically looked like a giant garden. And according to Jeff, as the two passed the cemetery, he heard his son, who had been singing in the back seat, abruptly stop. He then pointed to the cemetery and said, look at all those people. Jeff quickly turned to look, but didn't see anyone over there. Puzzled, Jeff asked his son Miles what he was talking about, saying there's no one over there. To which his son said, all those people over there, there sure are a lot of grandmas. Jeff was completely spooked and asked his son what the people were doing. And Miles said, 
they're all standing there, looking down at the grass. Jeff said he was a bit unsettled by the conversation with his son. The two got home and later that day, they were sitting down watching TV, when suddenly Miles turned to Jeff and said, you know, they weren't alive. At first he thought his son was referring to the cartoon show they were watching, so Jeff asked what he meant. But Miles wasn't talking about the TV show. He said to his dad, those people we saw, they were all paused. From that point on, Jeff said he didn't know if Miles had the sixth sense or just a wild imagination. This story really gave me the chills, as we know that kids are more susceptible to ghost sightings because they have a much greater sense of awareness than many adults. But this account really gives me the creeps because of how Miles described them, like they're paused. That sends a chill up my spine. And I will definitely remember all of these stories the next time I'm out on a road trip. You never know who you might come across. But if I ever run out of cash, I really hope I do encounter the ghost of three. But what about you? Have you ever had a spooky experience out on the road? Seen something strange or paranormal? Let me know. I always love hearing your stories. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I look forward to next episode. Until then, I'm Avery Ross, and this is Avery After Dark.